Steve Dotto here. How the heck are you doing this fine day? And welcome to our webinar in 10 minutes. This is a recap of our weekly webinar Wednesday series. Every week on Dotto Tech, we host a live training tutorial webinar called Webinar Wednesday. And in it, we explore different aspects of online video or productivity or social marketing. Uh, they're free to attend, uh, but they take about an hour and you have to be there live. This is a 10 minute recap of the most salient points of Webinar Wednesday. Now I want to invite you to join us live for Webinar Wednesday. We'll have a link above and a link below for you to click on, or you can just sit back, relax, and enjoy this week's Webinar Wednesday recap. Let's take on simple screencasting. I love this topic. It's one of my favorite things to talk about screencasting. Because at the end of the day, screencasting is the basis of all the video that I produce. I, think it's all, I don't really like the term screencasting. I don't love the term screencasting because I think people think it's just limited to the computer screen and it's only got to be about menus and mouse cursor showing things on the screen. And it's not. I prefer to call it desktop video if I had the choice. But Somebody got there before me and they made the decision that it's screencasting, so that's what it is. Here's the basis of what screencasting is. Screencasting is using the computer as a production tool. The same way we use desktop publishing uh, systems as a publishing tool. We're composing, laying out, uh, writing, preparing, and finally sending a print file to a printer. Desktop uh, video or screencasting allows us to use the computer to do all of the production process in video. And I mean all of the production process. Essentially anything that you can see on your computer screen can become an asset in a screencast. So I need you to comprehend the fact that anything you can see on your computer screen can become a part of your screencast. And here's the process of screencasting is we launch a piece of software, you fire up that software, and then that software has the ability for you to record. And when you're in this sort of live to tape, version of screencasting. We call it live to tape because we used to record everything onto, onto, a, onto, a, onto a videotape. Uh, but when you're doing live to tape, what's happened is what you're doing in real time, you're recording uh, as it happens. So it's all happening live. So the audio coming from my microphone right here is being fed through at the exact same time as the video coming from my video camera up here. And then if I want to compose the screen or have the screen in the background, it's here as well. And that's all happening in real time. As a matter of fact, I could be even playing the slides in real time if I wanted uh, on the screen and using them, but I actually will add the slides that you see here a little bit later. So that's what screencasting is. It allows us to pull all of these different pieces in and record them. But it doesn't have to be done synchronously. It doesn't have to be done live to tape this way. We could also bring in video that's been recorded somewhere else, B-roll. We can bring in video from our own camera. Uh, we can bring in still shots. We can bring in audio files, animation files. Any digital file, anything you can see on the computer screen can be added later. And then we use a, uh, a nonlinear editor to compose it all and then finally output it to whatever format we choose it's being output to. So that's that's the nature of it. I, I, I hope that that makes it a little bit more clear. We use it for the backgrounds of our webinars. You can be using it for YouTube videos of all sorts. There's almost nothing on YouTube other than like entertain, pure entertainment things that you can't do screencasting in. Uh, I use it for our vlogs. Uh, you can use it for all sorts of social video applications, be it Instagram video or Facebook video. Anywhere you're recording and then uploading the video to some service, Screencasting is going to work for you. Uh, real value delivering and developing content for courses and trainings and tutorials. And I even have started using screencasting for sending personal messages. Uh, so I don't think that there's an easier way to create video. And you can probably use the, just the tools you have. You know, you can start creating videos just using your built-in camera that's built into your notebook computer. You could use your headset as your microphone if you choose. Uh, you don't need to buy advanced tools in order to do it. And even if you do buy tools, uh, they're fairly inexpensive, the ones that the, we teach to use. Uh, there's a fairly uh, fairly reasonable investment in hardware uh, and in software. Uh, you can turn product around fast. Now, I'm recording this video. You can see a timestamp. I'll put it up. It's uh, tw 1.23. This is Tuesday. And we are less than 24 hours later that we'll be broadcasting this. I'll have this video up, edited, uploaded, ready to go, and inserted in this webinar within less than 24 hours. And as a matter of fact, I'll also have the 10 minute recap ready 
within that period of time as well. So it's very fast turnaround. I think what I should do now is I should just jump in and I should show you a little bit of the recording process of how we go about doing a screencast. So, all right, let me walk you through the ScreenFlow interface right now. So what you're looking at right here is the entire ScreenFlow editing interface. The screen that I'm talking to you now from, this is the preview. This is where you see what's actually going to be uh, output to video. So in this window here, we basically place all of the different elements that we want to make into our video. So it can be images, animations, video as you see right now. Now down below me, is the timeline. This is a multi-track editor, meaning that each one of our media types can live on one of those tracks, and it's a non-linear editor, meaning we can cut and we can move those tracks around. We promote them to the foreground by moving them up in the stack, and in the background by moving them down in the stack, and we can cut and chop and dice and add all sorts of different special effects to the video that we see beneath us here. Now you see my video screen right now, but if I click on the uh, timeline, uh, the track beneath mine, that will bring up the screen capture. This is the screen that was being recorded in real time with me right now. And what you see is my Facebook page in this particular case here, my Facebook homepage. So I'll back to that in a few moments. To this side here is our media bin. This is where all of our assets live. So in here is the video track and the screencasting track, or the screen capture track that you see below, reflected below, but we can add other elements such as graphics, etc., to this area. Now on this side here are all of our tools. Sorry, no, it's still on this side over here. It's still over this side here are tools. I'm trying to remember what it looks like in my head. On this side here, though, if I switch which uh, if I switch which option I have, I have the different tools which allow me to apply different effects to the screens that we're looking at. And this is where the magic comes in ScreenFlow, the ability that we can turn the screen and any of the elements within our screen into characters within our video. So if I go now to the screen view, I'll just squeeze myself down into a smaller window here in the side, see how we've done that. And then if I want to say zoom in on something that's happening here in the uh, in my feed here, let's zoom in on my on my sidebar here within Facebook. So I can describe this process in the video, but we see we create a camera move. It, it, it's called a camera move here, where we basically create an effect that zooms out. Now I'm using keyboard shortcuts to do this, to help uh, make it it's just kind of the natural way that I do it now as I edit. But if we take a look now and replay that segment, you'll see exactly what happened. So if I go now to the screen view, I'll just squeeze myself down into a smaller window here in the side, see how we've done that. And then if I want to say zoom in on something that's happening here in the uh, in my feed here, let's zoom in on my, that's the essence of this tool. Now, once we've composed all of the different elements and got our video ready to output, remember we can add photos, we can add slides, we can add all sorts of additional elements. Then we are ready to output this video and send it to whatever online service we choose, be it uploaded to YouTube, delivered in a webinar like this, uh, embedded into an online course. That's the simplicity of a tool like ScreenFlow. Now, of course, you'll master this sort of tool after using it for a little while, like any tool. The more you use it, the better you get with it until it becomes second nature, how you compose and create your videos. Now, before we leave this, as promised, I wanna show you a little bit of Snagit. Now, Snagit is a screen capture utility that comes from the people at TechSmith. Now, we've actually got a video coming out on Snagit in a couple of weeks that explains it far in more detail than what I'm gonna give you right now. But this is a tool that allow you to do classic screen capture, you know, just basically clipping elements of the screen, marking them up with graphics, saving them, storing them, that sort of stuff but they've also got the ability to record animations, videos, and audio all within the same screen capture utility. Now, unlike a true screencasting tool, you don't have the opportunity to mix the two media types together at the same time. So in other words, I can't have my webcam video and my audio and a screen all active on the screen at the same time, but I can switch back and forth between the two. So this is ideal for doing something like sending e personal email messages, video email messages to people, or to do some really basic, simple screencasting things such as capturing slideshows in the sort where you don't need to combine your face 
and the video. Let me just show you really quickly. Um, I, I'm going to choose this one. This I've created some presets. One of them is uh, kind of capturing an image of the screen with your video being captured at the same time. And these presets allow you to kind of set set up basic formats that you're going to be capturing. But I'm just going to run this quickly. I'm going to click capture. When I click capture, it asks me to marquee the area of the screen that I want to capture. So let's say I'm going to be talking to somebody about what's happening here on this screen. I guess it could be interesting. Then I click on record here and I switch back and forth. This record button will switch to a switcher that allow me to go from screen to camera to screen. So watch, I start the recording going, it counts me down and now it's switched over to my webcam. So it's actually capturing the video from the webcam right now and storing this video on the computer. But you see the little green marker here? If I want to switch over to my screen, now it's capturing whatever I see on the screen. So I can talk about the information that I see on the screen. If I'm doing uh, talking about uh, some changes to the website or some, if I'm recording a slideshow, I'd have the slides here up on the screen, then I can switch back to my video to wrap things up with the message. Once I'm done, I click the stop button over here and then what happens is uh, Snagit then takes that video, compresses it and it, then it allows us to store it and share it in a variety of different formats. We can store it on our local hard drive but they also have some web services that allow us to store it online and be able to just send out a web link for people to play it back. So much like you'd store a video on YouTube or another video hosting service, Screencast.com, which is the video hosting service that's attached to Snagit and to Camtasia, will actually store the video and allow you to send it out. So we use this methodology for creating personalized video emails that we send to our patrons and to other people that I want to communicate with via email. That's another form of screencasting. It doesn't just have to be for broadcast video, it can also be for personal messages. I hope that I've given you a good idea now of some of the different pieces of screencasting. And that is it for our 10 minute recap of Webinar Wednesday, actually a little bit more than 10 minutes, about 11 minutes 45, but who's counting? I hope to see you live next time on Webinar Wednesday. Check the links below in order to join us. I love reading your comments and suggestions, so please post below. I do read every single one. If you like this video, please give it a like and share it with your friends or colleagues who may find it useful. Now make sure you've subscribed and hit that notification bell. And if you have time, check out some of our other videos right over there. Till next time, I'm Steve Dotto. Have fun storming a castle.